So for today's video, I wanted to share with you guys three simple tricks when it comes to finding the perfect foundation shade and concealer shade, really just any complexion products, y'all. I would say the very first thing you need to know is knowing what your undertone is. You guys, if you don't know what your undertone is, it's gonna be so easy for you to grab the wrong shade thinking it's the right shade because it goes with your skin tone but it doesn't match your skin's undertone. And your skin's undertone is pretty much the color that you see underneath your skin. So a good way to tell what your skin's undertone is, well let me tell you guys the three main types of undertones first. You have a cool undertone, a warm undertone, and a neutral undertone. There are other undertones but those are just the three main types. So with the cool undertone your skin skin will probably have a pink tint to it with a warm undertone your skin will have a golden slash yellow tint to it and with a neutral undertone your skin will have a mixture of both not just pink not just yellow slash golden it's a mixture of both one thing that i tell people when it comes to finding your undertone is to stand in the mirror in natural lighting with no makeup products on your face no type of skin products when you first wake up in the morning um just standing in the mirror and looking at your skin. You'll be able to see that color that is underneath your skin. So whether it's pink, golden, yellow, um, neutral. Another way you can tell what your skin's undertone is is by looking at your veins. So if you're someone who has like pink or bluish veins, you more than likely have a cool undertone. If you have green veins, your undertone is more than likely warm or it could be olive, but I'm only sticking to the three. If your veins appear colorless or a mixture of both, you more than likely have a neutral undertone. I know with darker complexions like myself, sometimes it's hard to really see what your veins are. If you're having a hard time seeing your veins or even looking at the color that's beneath your skin, I would say one thing you can do is go to Sephora and let them shade match you with their shade match tool. I did this just to see if I or if they got the right undertone for me and they did. I'm a neutral undertone but yeah, that skin tool, you guys, it literally tells you what your undertone is. If you have a Sephora near you, I mean, it's completely free. I would go in there and just, you know, let them shade match you. Make sure you go in with no makeup because that is going to be the best way they'll be able to tell what your skin's undertone is. So once you figure out what your skin's undertone is, next you need to know what your skin type is. There are four skin types. You have normal skin, you have dry skin, you have oily skin, and you have combination skin. When you go and pick out your complexion product, you want to make sure that it best suits your skin type so that your makeup can look its best. So normal skin is literally the best skin. Your skin is perfect. Um, as far as like your moisture barrier is very balanced. You don't wake up with your skin very oily. You don't wake up with your skin really dry. Your skin is literally normal. It looks normal. It feels normal. You are blessed. <laughs> And with oily skin, aka my skin, you probably wake up with your skin looking very shiny, very glowy. Oily skin just has like this natural glowy finish to it. Like even when I put on powder, even when my face is kind of matte, my face is still shiny. Like my skin still looks shiny, if that makes sense. So if you're someone with oily skin, those are things you probably experience. And when it comes to dry skin, if you have dry skin, you probably wake up with your skin feeling tight. It's probably patchy. Um, it probably loses moisture quickly. You probably have to hydrate your skin more often than most. If you experience any of that, you more than likely have dry skin. And then you have combination skin, which is two skin types or three skin types in one. For example, you could have a really oily T-zone, but the rest of your skin is normal. And when I'm talking about a T-zone, I'm pretty much talking about the forehead, the nose, the mouth, and the chin. So most people will most people that I come across, they have an oily T-zone. They always talk about their T-zone being oily, but the rest of their skin being normal. Another combination that people might have is um, dry and oily skin. You might have oily skin around your cheeks and dry skin everywhere else. So that is combination skin. It's just multiple skin types on one face. If you get a complexion product that does not suit your skin type, it might look good for a little bit, but it's definitely not gonna stay looking like that throughout the day. If you're someone with dry skin, 
but you like mattifying makeup products, you want to get hydrating complexion products and maybe follow up with a powder and even a mattifying setting spray to give you that mattified look, but you want to make sure you're using hydrating products on your face. If you use a lot of mattifying complexion products on your skin, on top of your dry skin, it is very likely that your skin is gonna look patchy or it's gonna be harder to blend. It's just not gonna suit your skin. Also, I wanna mention that you want to make sure you have a good skincare routine because skin prep is very important when you're putting on any makeup product on your face. You wanna make sure your skin is very moisturized, clean, you have sunscreen on. If you want your makeup to look its best, your skin prep has to be on point as well because that plays a part in your makeup looking good. I would say the third tip is knowing what type of coverage you want. You have some complexion products with light coverage, some with medium coverage, some with full coverage, some with buildable coverage, so many different types of coverages that you can achieve. So just knowing what you're going for. So for an example, full coverage is gonna give you this flawless, airbrush, smooth, baby-like skin finish. If you get the right brand, the right shade, and if you are applying it right. Because I know sometimes when people think of full coverage makeup, they think of cakey clown makeup, but that's not the case if you know how to apply it. Then you have light coverage, which is literally the natural skin-like finish where it has people guessing if you're wearing makeup, if you're not, you literally trick people with light coverage makeup because it's so light, it blends perfectly into your skin if you have the right shade shade. Um, it doesn't necessarily get rid of all of your blemishes or if you're someone who doesn't have blemishes, you're blessed. Light coverage makeup can add more color to your face. I feel like my natural face looks very gray sometimes so I might add a light coverage foundation or even a skin tint to just add some color back to my face. It can smooth out some blemishes that are not super prominent. The next type of coverage is medium coverage and medium coverage is literally in the middle. Like it's not full coverage, it's not light coverage. It'll probably conceal majority of any blemishes or any scars that you have on your face. It won't get rid of everything. It's lighter than full coverage makeup. It's still on the natural side just depending on how you apply it. And then when it comes to buildable coverage, I like buildable coverage complexion products because you can literally go from light medium all the way to full coverage just depending on how you're feeling that day. I have one more tip that I just thought of when it comes to picking out your foundation and even your concealer. So I'll start off with foundation. I always choose three foundations that I feel like looks good on me, I think will match, and I swatch them. And when it comes to swatching the foundation, I like to swatch it right here on my jawline and drag it all the way down to my neck and then I wait for it to oxidize. Most foundations, they do tend to oxidize, which means after they dry down, they do change color a little bit. I'll do a three or two foundation shade lineup. I swatch it all the way down, go into my neck. I wait for it to dry down and I see which foundation shade looks the best, which foundation shade blends in perfectly. The reason why I like to swatch it on the bottom half of my face is because the bottom half of my face and my neck is darker than the rest of my face. And I personally prefer to use a darker foundation where I can just add the lightness back to my face with concealer compared to trying to use a lighter foundation for the my whole face and then I gotta worry about adding dark I don't know adding shadows to my face contour it's just I like simplicity okay so that's how I swatch and then I just go with my intuition and what my eyes is telling me and that's how I pick my perfect shade all the time. There's two ways that I like to pick out my concealer. I normally swatch my concealer in the area I'll be applying it. So that would be underneath my cheeks. I might apply it here just to kind of see how it looks on my skin tone. But I also pick two to three concealer shades. Whenever I am swatching a concealer shade that I'm only going to put on my bare skin, like a natural concealer shade, I do that on my bare skin. But if I'm picking out a concealer shade that I'm going to wear with foundation, I swatch that concealer shade on top of my foundation shade and blend it out to see how it looks. Because if you don't do that, if you just put on your bare skin, 
no matter how perfectly matched your foundation is, the concealer will mix in with that foundation and the shade will change a little bit. So if you're getting a concealer for your foundation, you wanna make sure you have on the foundation and swatch the concealer on top of your foundation so that you get the perfect concealer shade. Those are all the tips for now. I've been planning this video for a long time <laughs> and there's just so much information that I can give you guys when it comes to picking out the perfect shade, but I don't want this video to be overwhelming overwhelming so let me know if these tips help you if you guys have any questions of course leave them down in my comment section and uh, yeah don't forget to like this video if you like the video and I'll see you guys next time bye you guys